and welcome to Get the Table, another wrestling roundtable discussion podcast with myself, Adam Wilborn, Andy Murray, and Michael Sidgwick from What Called You here to discuss another burning wrestling issue. And that issue today is that WWE has a Ronda Rousey problem. Michael Sidgwick, what is this Ronda Rousey problem? Uh, she's not wrestling very good matches. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> like, she just isn't. She just isn't. Um, as we'll delve into later, I feel like it's a fall from grace rather than someone who isn't a particularly good professional wrestler, even though it might really scan as much now. But uh, my esteemed colleague, um, Michael Hamflet, who's enjoying a well-deserved day off today, Mm -hmm. um, hit upon a really good take, which has kind of formed the basis for uh, this discussion in that Ronda Rousey used to be a great and completely distinct professional wrestler Like, as crazy as it might read now, or sound now, rather, like, she was drawing comparisons to Kurt Angle's first year. She wasn't quite as good as that, let's be perfectly frank, but she performed miracles in that ring throughout 2018, like veritable miracles in that ring, and she is a shadow of the performer she was. We'll delve into how good she used to be and if that old version of Ronda Rousey can be resolved now. But Hamlet's take was that the longer she has spent in the WWE system the worse she is as a professional wrestler and what really an indictment of the WWE system and the house style and the tempo that they are asked to work and the level of quality around her. It's kind of an indictment. Mm. Um, She doesn't really cause a blip on the radar and it's Mm. shocking. This woman was once the most famous woman in the world, Mm -hmm. at least in the context of sports. Um, She is a massive mainstream name. Can you remember go back to WrestleMania 31 2015 when she shared a stage with The Rock and it felt like two uh, mainstream names of equal renown Mm -hmm. were sharing the same screen all at once. The disparity between those two performers now is absolutely ridiculous. And yes, you understand this might not be a popular thing. It's a WWE problem in terms of the size of that promotion. Obviously massive in wrestling, the undisputed market mm-hmm. leader mm-hmm. and all the rest of it. But her mainstream value has been dulled by being in that system for so long. But man, so is her star power. Um, so is her ring work, just that aura, a presence, her visibility, a profile. And in ring, it's really getting actively, actively bad. The Liv Morgan match or matches plural, were rubbish, particularly the one at Extreme Rules, so disjointed, like a nightmare of a botch fest. That same criticism was true of her match with Shotzi, and uh, I've seen Shotzi work really good matches in NXT, really good matches. I don't think she's a particularly refined performer. In fact, I think that's a feature, not a bug, but there should be a way of getting a good match out of Shotzi on the main roster. Isn't happening. Liv Morgan very popular in certain circles online. I think she has potential. The matches with Ronda Rousey were actively horrible. I would posit that Ronda Rousey has worked one, count them, one good match, and it still wasn't 2018 to year, upon her return this year, and that was against Charlotte Flair. Yeah. I think the longer she has spent in that system is dulled her, mm. and I just think that she needs a more unique careful presentation. You know what, maybe some of it's on her as well, and we'll get to that, um, I think, in our next talking point before Murray adds his thoughts. Yeah, yeah. She's, 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 you know, come in and had this amazing rookie year, as, as Sidge has alluded to. Obviously, she's gone away. But when she came back, he also said there, she did have a fantastic match at Backlash with, with Charlotte Flair. Where did it all go wrong for you? Yeah, the, the Charlotte Flair match was really quite special um, in terms of how physical it, 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 the whole thing felt. For me, the best Ronda matches have always been the ones where it felt like they're just taking lumps out of each other because <laughs> it's so compelling. And she's had so many capable dance partners in that regard. Um, but when watching that match, it felt okay. You know, these first few months, uh, she's just shaking the rust off. She's she's come back in the Rumble and it's her first merge back after after giving birth, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Which is a huge, um, obviously, exactly. massive thing to go through. Exactly. Completely. I've been reliably informed by my wife. <laughs> life and body altering beyond the comprehension of the three men sitting at yes. this table. Huge yes. thing, huge thing. So you got to that backlash match and you thought, okay, we're back, we're cooking again. Ronda's back, Ronda's back. But it's not really panned out that way, unfortunately. Um, the, the points with regards to her star power are 100% correct. When she first came around, she was absolutely, out with people who've been created in this system, like, like The Rock, like John Cena, like Brock Lesnar, absolutely the biggest name in the company, the biggest mainstream name in the company. Special attraction, it's no longer reflected in numbers and it's no longer feels that way on TV either. Um, 
And there's a lot of reasons for that, of course. But with regards to where it started to go wrong, I think it was kind of trending in this direction before she actually departed. So you can you can go further back than this, of course, and, and we should and we will. But the feud, the build to WrestleMania 35 was very difficult. That was a really interesting storyline to navigate because it had some really incredible visuals, like the car window smashing and all of that stuff and some real heated brawls. And of course, we were all getting to that pay-per-view on such goodwill for Becky and her rise. And she was getting crowned in the main event and we all knew it was going to be special. So we were quite forgiving of some bits and pieces along the way. But it really felt like Ronda was starting to lose her way in an accelerated fashion heading up to that point. In hindsight, that was probably a really good time for her to actually go away because yes, the the match ending was, was it was botched. It, it was unfortunate yeah. how it panned out. It was a shame, it sucked. Not the best way to disappear for a while. Um, but with the way people had been souring on her and you saw the reactions online, I think that part of this is a symptom because when someone is pushed really strongly there, because it's so rare, or because it was so rare under Vince McMahon, that when someone just wins a lot these days, which is how you make stars, it always has been how you make stars, people receive it as them being John Cena. Yeah. But there's a good way and a bad way of doing it, and the Cena thing for a long time, as with Roman Reigns as a babyface, was evidently the bad way. Um, but you saw that backlash coming through. Ronda wins too much, super Ronda, she's being overprotected at the cost of this person, this, this, and this. At the time, you could back that up by going, well, she's a huge star and she's putting Becky Lynch over in the main event and Becky's the one you all want to go over in the main event, so it's all good. Now, you can't really make that argument anymore. But you can go, was it was it that Survivor Series prior to that where she had the run-in with the fans? This is the point I was going to make yeah. as well, yeah. So Survivor Series 2018, before which she had had this incredible rookie year, like even before her stuff looked legitimate, as Murray rightly points out, like her stuff was so much physical, as you'd expect and legitimate looking than anybody else on the roster, irrespective of gender. This is a woman who performed miracles with Nia Jax, and I'm not overstating that whatsoever. <laughs> like... She cleared two thirds of the ring with a dive to uh, Nia Jax to the outside. Like the dynamism that was there, the sharpness was there. She just looked like an absolutely incredible professional wrestler. And she had her, to this day, very best singles match. Like the WrestleMania um, 34 mixed tag was a masterpiece. Mm, yes. Even before she did anything physical in that match, I remember, or like just after, um, she had this the first very well built towards interaction with Stephanie McMahon. And the second that Stephanie McMahon scurried away in fear, she realized that she'd ripped some of her hair out, looked at it, kind of appreciated her own work, and then just sort of shrugged as if to say, I don't care that I've ripped her hair out. Like she got crowd manipulation. She got sort of mm. the way to perform the theatrics of it immediately. And then she had a best singles match at Survivor Series 2018, where she put herself through hell and the fans completely booed her out the building. Yeah. I never understood that she should have went NXT first. Like, are you stupid? Mm. Like she- It's not she, how it works. Yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> Get her at the start of WrestleMania. She's a massive marquee name. She's not, you know, no one has to go through the system in the first place. If you make that argument, whatever. When the fans booed her, she has not been the same since. Is there, this is just a, a hypothetical, like, well, not a hypothetical question, but like just a suggestion. Is the resentment towards the fans, which she has articulated many times over, like driving a so certain resentment in her performances? I hate saying that, oh, it's this wrestler phoning it in, they're taking bumps. God damn it. Yeah. On some level, it is almost impossible for a wrestler to, to phone it in. Yeah. That phrase just should not apply to professional wrestling for me. I'm not a safety police nerd or anything like that, but come on, these people are bumping. She could do many more things with her time. She could yeah. retire. She's not phoning it in, but she's certainly not as enthusiastic as mm. she used to be. And yes, the booking's been terrible. And yes, her dialogue in particular, even by WWE standards, sorry, WWE fans, is pretty atrocious. Mm. It's difficult for anyone to get over with that. But I can't remember the storyline that built her matches with Nia Jax. I can imagine they were terrible. My memory is failing me, which probably says a lot. Mm. But in-ring performances were still there. So I, I don't necessarily think it's who she's programmed with or the terrible booking. But she used to wear the biggest smile out there. Yeah. Like she used to earnestly love this. She was overjoyed to be a part of it. And yes, I know she's playing heel, but if anything, wrestlers prefer to play heel. Every single wrestler yeah. who ever gets asked, what do you prefer to do? Being a heel. It's yeah. fun to get booed. It's easier than being a baby face. So if anything, she should be having more fun right now, particularly since it's an extension of a real life personality. Yeah. Mm. She seems to really hate wrestling fans. I just think she doesn't care as much as she, as she used to. And that converged with WWE 
being WWE is just made them complete mess of this. I wonder if there's a point to be made with regards to the crowd reactions and stuff. The the microscope that Ronda Rousey has been under since day one in yeah. her professional combat sports career has been insane, incomprehensible to to probably even the majority of the people in the wrestling business because she's breaking through in the UFC. You see my their, Twitter replies. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's breaking through in the UFC as their first female yeah. fighter, and she she. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She's the the person who establishes that division because she becomes such a big star. The poster woman. In. Yes, there we go. The poster woman. That's the word I'm looking for. She's like the vanguard of this thing. She has the fight with, was it Liz Carmouche she faced first? I think it was. Uh, that aside, she goes through the tough defeats uh, to Holly Holm. And I, I'm Amanda sorry. Nunes. Amanda Nunez. There you go. My MMA knowledge is not what it was. And the media coverage of those, it is so pointed. It is so focused. It is so just relentless. On look, People love the certain outlets in particular, this person who gets built up and built up and built up and then they get knocked out and they yeah. have to live through this, this pressure crumbling down. I wonder, and I'm not saying that this is the case, but I wonder if there's maybe a, a thing from there that's maybe lingered a little bit and that would be very understandable and you could certainly, um, you, you can kind of see where all that comes from. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a real shame and the quality of the opposition is a great point to make. That was the best Nia Jax match ever. Yeah. And it was against a rookie. She had great matches across the board. The Nikki Bella match in itself was a yeah. triumph. All respect to Nikki Sawa, right? Best forearm elbow in the game uh, and all that. She worked really hard to become a, d a decent pro wrestler, but not quite to that level. That was a real mm. triumph at Evolution. Mm -hmm. And you don't even need to list the Sashas and the Charlottes and no. whoever else, because you can look at anyone. They, they were all good. And now, not so much. Well, yeah, I was going to say the relationship with the fans is arguably the reason why we're here. Fire Ronda Rousey, of course, trending this week. I gross. Think, I think yeah, it's, it's really, gross. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. I think it's a very valid point, though, like you say, with whether it, you know, Ronda Rousey was, is the perfect example there. You've had it with numerous other combat sports athletes, you know, boxing, you know, P&L, Pessy and Pinaldo. You're like, there's people are there building up. So the moment they slip up or they, they you know, the moment they get knocked down, <laughs> Then they're all over it. The knives were already out for Ronda Rousey because the, because of the hyperbole around her about her saying, "Well, I think maybe I could probably fight Floyd Mayweather as well." Yeah. And that's you know she was being encouraged to say that, and then you transfer that into a wrestling sphere, and it's arguably magnified. I'm not saying this wouldn't exist without some of the things that she has said, but she herself has really caught some yes. controversy oh, yes. with some of the vile things that yes. she has said. So let's just also acknowledge that. One hundred percent. Like I. I anecdotally cannot remember the last time I said something nice about Ronda Rousey's work without being reminded. And it, it has, you have to In good faith as well. Yeah, you absolutely have to mention these things. So what, what is the solution? We're, we're hearing reports that potentially she could be working Raquel Rodriguez at the Royal Rumble, um, which, because I, I really like the dynamic of her and, and Shayna Baszler. I have to say this. I think mm -hmm. it's, well, like you say, the, the verbiage and the way that they're presented is poor, but like the potential there of like two legit UFC fighters backing each other up. They already should be unstoppable. It's not working, though. No. It just isn't working. The dialogue's pitiful, and that would be excusable if the in-ring was there, but the in-ring isn't. Um, ultimately, you've never got the opportunity again to launch Ronda Rousey as a WWE wrestler. They did a fantastic job at WrestleMania 34. It was We watched it in the old office, and it was one of the best matches we've ever watched, and one of the best matches to watch in front of a group of people. It was just mesmerizing yeah. it was so well done it was so well done you can't do that again you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube i, I don't know it doesn't seem like a heart's in it it doesn't seem like she's a big deal um look i understand papa h's wwe is getting a lot of critical acclaim but ultimately the best thing on that tv show right now he inherited I don't necessarily think he's been tested as a booker and more importantly as a promoter to really get a star over. Um, and it's kind of an indictment that he's not being able to rescue Ronda Rousey at this point. Um, ultimately, I made the take once that the easiest way to get over in WWE, this is true of Roman Reigns, um, it was true of so many different people when they return from injury. The easiest way to get over in WWE is to not appear regularly on WWE television. <laughs> and this might be the case for Ronda. She might need another break, a refresh, like, a re like some thought process behind it. Um, this is such a terrible take for a 37-year-old white male podcaster to say that maybe she needs a mouthpiece. 
because that promo was on good. And if you look at the obvious shorthand one that everyone goes to, Paul Heyman is the only guy, I think, in that company in a managerial capacity who knows how to talk around promoting a fight and not a story. Maybe there could be some help there. Um, I don't know, but this is not working. And if they want to maximize the value, and I still think she must have value, mm. something needs to change. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if uh, this might be a good example of maybe uh, Ronda would be a beneficiary of a stricter enacting of the WWE system. Maybe she needs stronger agenting. Maybe she needs a heavier hand on that side. But like you say, Michael, it has to be someone like Paul Heyman. Um, we don't know how we don't know how Jason Jordan agents matches and, and produces things and stuff because we're not there. But Paul Heyman, there's countless testimonials of how this guy operates things and how he has had roles in the bloodline and Brock Lesnar and all this great stuff that everyone's enjoyed where it feels bigger and more important and more impactful at the top of the card. And more distinct as well. Exactly, exactly. And that's what Ronda Rousey should feel because she is distinct. She is a trailblazing athlete in two sports. Um, and it, it has come off the rails, unfortunately. You know, we saw, and perhaps maybe this is uh, evidence that she is a bit reflective about the current situation. She asked for Brian Kendrick, her trainer, to come in to age in that match. Uh, the other week, and it did not work it, by any metric. It did not go over well either. No, no. it did not. Um, by whatever management you want to use, that match did not uh, resonate as intended. That did not work, bringing in the trainer, bringing in her original trainer, despite his own situation, of course. Um, perhaps we need another chef in the kitchen in this instance. Perhaps Rhonda with her very particular set of skills is someone who does need that bit of guidance and does need, no, 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 don't do this. You're not, you're not so great at that. Do this instead. You're never going to get that first match's magic back. You might be able to get another couple of bouts, the quality of the Charlotte matches and of the Sasha matches back. Uh, yeah, she gets agented like she's any other wrestler. Yeah. And she is not that. Yeah, obviously there was botches in the in the Shotzi match, but I thought it was all it was laid out so poorly. It felt like a handicap match yeah. at one point. And I was like, it shouldn't feel like that. It should yes, it should feel like the all the odds are stacked against Shotzi because yeah. not only have you got to get past Ronda Rousey, oh Shayna Bay's the one of the most dominant champions in NXT and also of MMA experience and stuff like that. It was such a surreal experience. And it feels so obvious because I've been campaigning for more of a Shayna Baszler presence in WWE for a while. I think I aligning her with, with Ronda makes a lot of sense. I think there's a nice interim story you could tell of like Shayna kind of doing all of Ronda's dirty work and Ronda eventually turning on her. And then you can maybe do something there either before or after WrestleMania if you want to do yeah. something. It feels like the obvious course, Sige, is... Well, if I'm booking this, have her break a load of people's arms on the road to WrestleMania and then have her face Becky Lynch in the one-on-one -on -one match we've all wanted. How do you feel about that and WrestleMania and beyond, I suppose? I swear this isn't a bit, right? But that is yet another good, good idea of yours, so... Hey, just call me butter, baby. I'm on a roll. <laughs> she does not feel like a killer. She feels like someone who works a slightly more submission-based WWE style than other WWE wrestlers working yeah. the WWE style. This is where the Heyman thing comes in. Like, everyone's over, I think, the Lesnar-Roman match formula. But if you can tweak it and make it Ronda's domain, she needs to feel like a killer again. I never, ever watch Ronda Rousey, right, in a, in a WWE match and thinking her opponent is in grave danger mm. because she should be. And she needs to feel like a killer again. And if they go a simple sort of Goldberg-esque um, route in order to do that, fine. She needs to feel like a killer. We need to disassociate from this sort of Gentleman's 3 WWE style with a few added submissions version of Ronda, who can't even do Gentleman's 3 at this point. Those matches are so botchy. The fact that she, and yes, what a terrible person to pitch. I understand why she pitched uh, mm. Kendrick, but come on, think about it for Christ's sake, right? Mm -hmm. Um... She herself seems to realize that this isn't working. She needs a different kind of approach, different kind of guidance. So maybe there is hope yet to circle back to the last question. But yeah, she needs to feel like a killer again. I just don't think anyone's in peril or danger. Just, just, what an indictment that is of the creative yeah. and of the presentation if you don't feel that way about Ronda Rousey. And booking her with Becky as we bring this to a close, Andy, mm -hmm. feels like the obvious choice, not just because it's the match we all kind of still want, the one-on-one -on -one version. That, I mean. That's how far this has all fallen, yeah. by the way. This match, I'm sorry, is nowhere near as big as it was no. at the tail end of 2018. Let's be realistic here. But 
if anyone can drag a great match out of her, it's someone like Becky Lynch. You certainly hope so. Um, and particularly now that Becky has reverted to the man, uh, that character's back. Big Time Bex is gone. I wasn't a Big Time Bex. I didn't like that character. I thought it was um, ill-suited to her performance abilities, even as a heel. Wasn't into it. Um, this is a lot more fitting. She will pull audiences behind her and ideally against her opponents. So, yeah, theoretically... If there's a person in that position who can help Ronda write the course as an opponent, yeah, it's Becky, 100%. Can even Becky achieve that at this stage will be the question that we will have answered, presumably, in the next four or five months. I certainly hope so. At one point, that match felt like the most special thing in mm. the world. It felt like a guaranteed WrestleMania headliner, particularly on this two-night format where you can do whatever you want, really. Um, but... Michael's right. The bloom has come off the rose a, a fair bit in that regard. Needs to be regrown, baby. So get that fertilizer, stick it on the soil, get your watering can. Let's do this. <laughs> Gardening. There you go. Well, let us know your thoughts on the whole round, Ronda Rousey problem in the comments section below or on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. Uh, well, actually, they can follow all three of us. You can follow Andy Murray on Twitter at... At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for HAPA, which I think that's Travis Brown's nickname. Ah, you can think. follow Michael Sidgwick on Twitter at... At M. Sidgwick. <laughs> What's the M stand for, mate? Uh, Michael. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> me on Twitter. Uh, and Follow us all at What Culture WWE. Subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. This week, get the table. My thanks to Andy, to Michael. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon. <laughs> I love that bit. I 